Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. Uh, we are still working on our shmup, and in this video, we will be adding uh, player lives. This time around, we're going to add an explosion for the player when they die, and we're also going to add some lives so that the game will start with three lives and you have three chances to survive. So, what we're going to do is we want a nice, unique looking explosion for the player's death. Uh, and there's another type of explosion in the Kinney game art uh, called the Sonic Explosion. And I went and got it out of that pack, and you'll be able to download it below if you don't have it. It looks a not, lot nicer, it's really flashy, um, and will be a good effect for the uh, player explosion. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another explosion animation uh, for the player. Okay, and it's going to work the same way as the ones we made in the last video. Uh, there's just another type of explosion we're adding. So what we need to do is we need to add, um, we need to load those images in. Okay, um, and I'm just going to tack this on to this, uh, to this loop, because if you look over here, the sonic explosion also has nine frames, just like the regular explosion did. So we can use the same uh, counting loop here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another file name. I'm just going to do it at the end of the loop here. And this is going to be Sonic Explosion 0 uh, whatever. Oops, PNG, not Pong, dot format I. OK, so that'll get, get us that. Then we can load the image. And don't forget to convert it. And then we have, uh, we can append it to the, um, to the list. Explosion and player. Player one is the one we want to add it to. Append image. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we have that. Now we can go and look at our explosion sprite, where really I think we're all good. One change I wanted to make was I was going to slightly, just a little bit, speed up the frame rate, um, make the explosions a little bit faster. Um, I think because once we have a whole lot going on, you're not going to want them to hang around on the screen too long. Uh, and then we can go down to the player death. And so what do we want to do here? Well, if the player's shield runs out, we want to spawn a uh, an explosion, right? So we could say death, call it the death explosion. And so that's going to spawn a new explosion that's going to be at the player's, the center of the player. And we're going to use the, the player type explosion, the sonic one we loaded. We'll add that to the all sprites group. And then here's the problem. So let's see what that looks like so we can see that. So if I let the mobs hit me, you see what happened when my shield ran out? It started to play the explosion, but we set running to false immediately after that. So there's no time for the explosion to play before the loop ends. So what we really want to do is give a chance for that explosion to play out. Uh, we also still have the player sprite on the screen, so the explosion is just showing on top of the player sprite. So we want to we want to remove the player. So what we can do is say player dot kill, which will delete the player's sprite, and we're not going to set running to false there. What we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to wait and say if the player died and the explosion has finished. Oops, that's when we want to actually end the game. 
So we're going to say if the player is not alive, alive is a little is is a Pygame sprite function that tells you whether it's the, the sprite exists or not, or it, whether it exists in any groups. That's what the kill command does. The kill command actually removes the sprite from any groups. And remember, if it's not in the all sprites group, it's not getting drawn or updated. So it's effectively gone. Um, so if the player is not alive and the death explosion is also not alive, so remember in our explosion sprite, we have those sprites automatically getting killed uh, when they finish looping through their animation. So if the player is dead and the explosion has finished playing, then we can set oops, we can set running equal false. Okay, so let's try that out. Let some rocks hit me. There we go. Ah, and then we've also left out one little thing, which was we forgot to set the color key when we loaded the image. So I had an ugly background there. Okay, let's try that one more time, and then we should be in good shape. There we go. All right, now on to the lives. Now what we'd like to do is, kind of like we did with the shield bar up in the corner, is we want to show how many lives we have on the screen. And a common way that you see in a lot of games is you just put some little icons up there, like a little miniature picture of the ship. And there'll be three of them, and then there'll be two of them, then there'll be one of them, and so on. So what we can do is we've already we're already loading the player image here, right? So what we can do is we can also load or, or create a miniature version of that using the scale transform. And we'll just call this the the mini the mini image. And that's just going to be a transform.scale of the player image and we're going to make it 25 by 19 so just a tiny little icon that looks just like the ship and I'm going to go ahead and set oops mini image set that color key to black okay and then we can go up to our player sprite and add a couple of things. We're going to add a lives parameter that will keep track of how many lives we have. So we're going to start the game out with three. And then we need to talk about what, what do we do when our lives run out? Well, we want to show the player explosion animation, which means we want to hide the player's sprite we actually don't want to delete it anymore. We want to actually hide it and then have it pop back up for your next life. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a flag. Remember, a flag is just a variable that can have uh, two values. And we're going to set it to be either be true or false. It can be hidden. When it's hidden, we won't display it. And we're also going to add a timer to keep track of how long we've been hidden so we can control how long we stay hidden and make the um, and adjust that delay until we have it the way we want it okay so so now we have what we need set up in the player so now down in our events now what we have to change here is now when we spawn this death explosion we're not going to kill the player, we're going to hide it. So what we want to do here is we're going to say player.hide, which we will define in a moment. We're going to take the lives and subtract one. We're going to set the shield back to 100 because you're going to spawn a new life. So, And we're going to also, oops, and then we're going to change right here we're not going to check if the player is alive. We're going to check if the player lives equals zero. Okay. So now if our shield reaches zero, we're going to hide, start a death explosion. And if our lives are zero and the death explosion has ended, that will be the end of the game. So we'll 
see that last explosion and then the game will be over. So we just needed to define how the player dot hide uh, works. So we'll go back up to our player here and we will define the hide method. Okay, so this is going to temporarily uh, hide the player. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to set the hidden flag to true. We're going to start our uh, hide timer. to whatever the time is right now. And then we're going to, there's a couple of ways we could hide this uh, this sprite, but a simple way is just to move it temporarily off the screen. So we just place it over here on the side. It can't get hit by anything, it can't get seen. Um, and then we'll just pop it back over. That's easier than taking it out of groups and stopping it, you know, removing it from the draw function and all of that. So we're just going to set the center of the rectangle to width over 2, height plus 200. So I'm just popping it down below the bottom, actually. We know there won't be any meteors there hitting us or anything, doing anything weird. So now we're hidden. Now in our update, we're just going to check to see if it's time to unhide. So if we're hidden and the um, and enough time has passed, and I'm just going to put 1,000, and that's in milliseconds, so that's one second. So we hide for one second, and, and then we come back. So we'll set hidden back to false, and we'll set our center back to uh, where we want to where we want to be which is with over two and it's actually going to be the same spot where we start out right height minus 10 so we just pop it back into the right location okay so let's try that out and see if we have it working the way we want okay now remember we're not going to see how many lives we have but there we go. So I explode, and then I pop back, and oh, I misplaced where we are supposed to be. That height minus 10 was supposed to be where the bottom is. So let's just make sure we have the right location. So what I'm going to do is, and again, there's all sorts of different ways you can do that. I'm just going to put it like that just so it's clear where we're placing it. Okay, so when we unhide, we should be back where we're supposed to be. A second might be a little too short, and sometime, eventually we're gonna want to check and make sure there's no actual meteor right there where we spawn, otherwise we're spawning right on top of the meteor and losing a bunch of shield, but that can wait. Uh, because the last thing we need to do is we need to show how many lives we have. Okay, let's set up our function to draw our lives. So I'm just going to call it draw lives. And what we want to do is we want to pass it a surface and an X and a Y, um, how many lives we have, and an image to use. That'll make it flexible so we can change it for other things if we want. And then we're going to just count, right? We're going to we're gonna uh, draw as many of them as we need for how many lives we have. So the image, the rectangle is going to be, we'll get the rectangle from the image, and we'll set the x equal to whatever x we specified, plus 30 pixels times i. And I put 30 there because if you remember when we made our mini image, we made it, it's 25 pixels wide. So if we draw one and then we move over 30 pixels, there'll be a nice five pixel gap in between them. 
So 30 times i, so the first one will be at x plus 0, second one will be x plus 30, and the third one will be x plus 60. The y will be just whatever y we said to use, and then we just split it onto the onto the surface. Image, image, rect. Okay, and that's it. So that's draw lives. And then down in our draw section of our game, we are just going to add a command to draw the lives. And like we said in the when we define the function, we're passing it the screen, what x and y we want to use. I'm going to say width minus 100. Remember, we have three of these. They're going to be about 90, and each one is 30 pixels apart. So it's going to be about 90 pixels wide when all three of them are there. So if we say width minus 100, we should have plenty of space. Five pixels down from the top. Um, the player's lives is the value, and um, player mini image. OK, let's see if it works. Oh, ah, I see we've made a little typo in our draw function, which is these were supposed to be underscores, not dots. OK. So let's run it. Okay. Ah, just remembered. Oh, see, our live disappeared there, so that's good. But I just realized there's one very important thing that we forgot, and that is we do not have an explosion sound for our player when they die. Um, I really want one of those because it's kind of dull without any explosion sound. So I have a sound in mind. <clears throat> so we'll go down here to our uh, location where we load all of our sounds. And we're going to call this uh, player. Where am I? Here we go. So we're going to call this the player die sound. Okay, pygame.mixer.sound. Sound directory. And then the file that I have for that, which I'll also put in the links below, is called Rumble 1. It's a nice deep explosion sound. So we load that. And then we're going to down here when the player gets hit. And we do the. Uh, and we spawn a death explosion, we will also play the death explosion sound right here. Player die sound dot play. OK, now we can run our game and see, oops, uh, several typos today. We need to capitalize sound there. We're creating a sound object. All right, now let's go all the way to uh, running out of... There we go, nice sound, isn't it? Uh, we're going to let all the lives run out so we can make sure that when I lose my last one, we actually have the game over. Excellent. All right, now this has been a pretty long video, so I'm going to stop for today, and I will see you next time.